Welcome to the shop, fellow maker. You've got Bill today, and I'm really excited because I'm doing some work with the CNC router for a couple of reasons. One, I think that sometimes people balk from uh, using a CNC router because they think it's a little too complicated for them, and this project's really simple. It's basically two-dimensional, uh, and it's a great beginner project. And the second reason I'm doing it is because my mom asked me to. And uh, whenever my parents reach out for a project that I can solve with my prop making skills, really happy to jump in. I made a uh, little handle for my dad's uh, 68 Volvo a while back using some molding and casting skills. So today, mom gets to take advantage of my CNC skills. Here's what she wants. My mom is a ceramics expert. Uh, she makes pots and bowls and all sorts of stuff out of clay, and she wants to make some of these stamps, or she wants to have some of these stamps that are made out of wood that she can use to press into clay and uh, leave that texture behind. She gave me a specific design, and that's the design. It's two and a quarter inches in diameter. We need to cut this out of a piece of wood. Let's go find some wood. I don't do a lot of like fine woodworking, but I do have a pretty good collection of hardwoods that I've picked up for various projects. For example, this I believe is Paduk that I used for the handle of the Samaritan. For this project, I need something about an inch thick. This looks pretty good and at least two and a quarter inches in diameter, which this definitely is. I'm not even sure what kind of wood this is, but it will probably do for our purposes. The dimensions are right. With our wood picked out, we need to head to the computer and do a little design work. Even though I'm gonna do the CAD and 3D modeling in Fusion 360, I'm gonna do most of the design work in Inkscape here. I actually do a lot of my 2D design here in Inkscape, especially if it's anything weird and curvy, like the design that mom sent me here. I'll just drag the JPEG she sent me into Inkscape, hit OK, and that is our design, but it's a raster image, it's a bitmap, it's just rows of pixels, and we need a vector. And we could go and trace this, but there's a better way. Inside of Fusion, I go to Path, Trace Bitmap, and then you can Tinker with some of these settings if you need to, but for a very black and white image, it's incredibly simple. I hit OK, and then I can close this, and it appears that nothing has changed. However, there is now a second image on top of our original. If we zoom way in, you can see the original is all, all jaggy. It's got all of the uh, pixels there, but the, uh, which we don't need anymore, I can delete that. The new one is all smooth. That's because these edges are now actual paths. And these are the sort of paths that something like Fusion 360 can use to create cut paths. And that's exactly what we're going to do. If we wanted to, we could go touch this up a little bit, but I think the really nice organic look here is exactly what my mom's going for. So we're going to roll with this and save it as an SVG file, and then that'll get imported into Fusion. Tools like Inkscape are super powerful. In fact, Inkscape is even free. I do a ton of design work in this software. Uh, a while back, I filmed a premium video that's for sale on our website that covers how to use everything in this program. If you're interested in that, there'll be a link down below. All right, let's head to Fusion. Here in Fusion, we're gonna start by inserting our SVG, the file we just made in uh, Inkscape. It wants to know where to put it. We'll put it on the bottom ground plane here. And you can see there it is. We'll hit OK. We can um, check how big it is. Let's zoom in here. The inspect tool lets us click on two spots and it'll tell us how wide that is. 33 millimeters, that is not big enough. It needs to be two and a quarter inches, so it needs to be a little bit bigger. Let me um, let me figure out how, what that is in millimeters. I went and did a little math. This needs to be 1.72. That's how big that needs to be. Uh, and we'll put it roughly in the center and hit OK. Let me just double check. This width is 57 millimeters. What do we want? 57 millimeters. Close enough for me. Uh, and that created a sketch for us. So now we have this whole thing here. Now, I want to start by creating the, the base of this, the, the solid chunk. If I actually select this whole thing here and hit E to extrude, I can make a big old puck. I'm going to go down the thickness of this piece of wood. This will be our stock. I don't need to cut anything away except for the design. So we're going to use the whole piece of wood and it is 21.3 inches. So that's how deep we'll make this. 
21.3, like that. It hides our sketch. But there we go. And this is the sketch we're going to use to cut out the pattern from this piece of wood here. I can select the uh, what would be the black space here. Hit extrude. And let's go down 5 millimeters, something like that. And that creates this pattern for us. Um, we're in the design space right now. If we change this to manufacture, we can start figuring out the CNC stuff. Starting with a new setup. This is basically how you tell this machine what CNC machine you're using. I already have my um, Shape Poco in there, so I can just grab that. And then you have to tell it the stock. Um, I like to orient uh, usually on this corner, the bottom left top surface of the material and then uh, we can tell it how big the material is. So I'm just going to give it a fixed size box and I'm going to feed in the dimensions of my piece of wood right here. So now you can visually see what our piece of wood is going to look like and where our cutout part is going to live in there. So now we can start doing operations to cut away the material we don't want. So for example, I can do a 2D adaptive clearing pass on this whole area here and I have to tell it which tool I want to use. I have a whole pile of CNC bits and you got to pick the right one. For this I'm going to start with a 1 8 inch bit that's flat on the bottom to clear away a bunch of material. I'll have to come in with a smaller bit to do some of the more detailed stuff later but this should at least remove most of the material. Without changing anything I'll hit OK and it will go and figure out the tool paths for me. And there we go. That's what it can cut out with that bit right there. And there's a few things I can change. This is cutting it all in one go. I'm probably going to split that up into some smaller bites so it does a few layers. And then we'll have to come back in with, like I said, with some smaller bits to get some of the details here. But let's get our material uh, set up on the machine and do this first pass of cutting. Here's our material on the spoil board with these clamps. You just screw them into threaded bits on the bottom there and it clamps down nice and strong. I want to make sure this has plenty of pressure so that it doesn't move when the router head is in here cutting it up. There we go. This doesn't want to go anywhere. We're all set. We can load up our program and get ready to cut the first thing. The program is this operation that we made before. You can see I've actually added a couple of passes so it's going to not do this all in one go. It's going to do it in three layers and I can right click on this and create NC program. This is the, the file that our G-code sender is going to uh, use to tell the machine what to do. Let's give it a name. We'll save that. Now that we have a program, we need a way to send it to the machine. For my Shapoko, they have this Carbide Motion program that connects to my CNC machine, and that's what tells it what to do. So it connects to the machine. I can initialize it, which homes it. Once the machine is initialized, we need to tell it where that upper corner is on the stock. And I do that by moving the head here and sending it to that spot and then zeroing it there. The first thing I do is I set the Z height by slowly moving it down until it just pinches this piece of paper. That means it's just at the top of my stock. There we go. I can't move the paper, so on my software I zero that. Now I can move it up. Next I move this over to the corner here and I zero the X and the Y. It's not as critical as the Z height, but we do want to get it close. There we go. So I hit zero X and zero Y. Now the software knows where the upper corner of that stock is. All right, now we can load our operation. It will let me know how long it's going to take. About six minutes. Uh, and everything should be set up. I have the correct bit in there. It's a 1 8 inch flat end bit. Uh, we can hit start job. Everything's ready to go on the machine. I just need to manually turn on the router. That'll get that going. I also have a vacuum here set up. I'm going to keep the boot off of it so we can see what's going on, but I'll use the vacuum to clean it up as it goes. Normally this would just 
snap right over there. Here we go. There we go, that's the first pass with the biggest bit. So I'll swap to a smaller bit and do another operation to get some of the more fine details. And we'll just do that over and over again until it's all done. To get the teeny tiny detail, I use an engrave operation and a 60 degree bit to go in, carve out little channels. And then finally I used a contour operation to cut out the perimeter and release my puck from the stock material. And there it is. Now I have to do a little bit of sanding and cleanup on this to get it sort of finalized and ready to go, but most of the work is done. I actually ended up doing this twice. This one got goofed up because the power went out. Uh, so the second one I did was a lot faster because I had all the operations figured out way ahead of time. That was a lot of fun. I bet my mom is really going to like this. I'm gonna go get this a quick cleanup and we'll grab some clay, see how it works. Well, here's a stamp. I just went over this with a Dremel tool and a scotch bright bit to sort of clean up any fuzzy parts coming off of there. Um, now we're, I've got a bit of clay, so just some oil-based clay. I'll give it a go. Yeah. And there it is. There's the impression. And I hope that's exactly what my mom wants. That's pretty cool, actually. It's really nice. Awesome! I'm really happy with how that turned out. I just showed this to my mom, and she is so pumped. She's going to make a bunch of mugs using this pattern, I think, like, rolled onto the surface. Very exciting. That wraps up this little project. If you've got a friend with a CNC machine or a makerspace nearby with a machine, hopefully this gave you enough confidence to maybe go and take that first step and give it a shot. Something as simple as this, as this can be a great way to learn how to use the software and all those fun operations. Thanks so much for hanging out with me in the shop today. I hope you learned something or at least had fun. Appreciate having you here. I especially want to thank the members of our Extra Credit Club. They're the fine human beings who keep us employed by contributing to your Patreon or right here on YouTube memberships. If you join, you'll get access to all of our videos early. We appreciate it and can't do it without you. That'll be it for me today. Thanks again for hanging out, and we'll see you in the next build.